So where does this leave us? Up to this point, we've really focused on the price increase between 2007 and 2008. And we can see that those same factors may have influenced the price increase in 2011. But where does our future uh, go? What does the price of food do into the near future? Well, in a book called The Economics of Food, uh, Patrick Westhoff argues that there are year-to-year -year fluctuations in food prices and that all of these factors, the ones that we've talked about up to this point, may have had some influence on food prices. Um, but the question is, which one of these factors was most important is not perfectly clear. But there are several factors that can influence the year-to-year -year variation in food prices. And these include weather, which we've already mentioned, but our ability to predict weather can be also very important in our ability to help manage food price increases. Because of La Nina and El Nino cycles, if we're better able to predict, we may better prepare ourselves for changes in supplies of food because of poor or good weather, and thus better prepare ourselves for these price increases and decreases. Income around the world, as we've mentioned, may play an important role in the price increases that we've seen, as incomes in countries like China and India continue to increase we could see continued pressure on food prices. Population growth is also an important factor that may influence the price of food. If the population continues to grow, or grow at a quicker rate than what we anticipate, then we could see greater pressure on food prices. Now the one, solve that has always, one solution that has always played an important role in the production of food is technology. If new technologies come on board that allow for greater production and more efficient production of food, pro uh, food products, then we could see a stabilizing or a decrease in the food prices. Historically, food prices have fallen because of improvements in technology. And of course, the last issue is energy. Energy plays an important role in the supply of food and also in the demand of food in terms of whether or not we need more or less biofuels. All of these factors can have an important uh, effect on what happens to food prices in the near future. Now, Westhoff and his colleagues at uh, the University of Missouri have created a model called FAPRI, and this model predicts food prices and other uh, uh, commodity prices broadly. And they looked at some of the factors that I've just mentioned and came up with a couple of scenarios of what food prices could look like in the near future. In one scenario, they argue that food prices could remain relatively stable. With lower population growth but rising income, we could see this push and pull effect keeping food prices relatively stable but increasing due to general inflation. Food prices may also increase. And this is because of increasing demand for meat and biofuels, some of the factors that we've talked about before. Income increases in Asia and greater changes in their diets, moving more and more to meat and the increased need for biofuels. And the third scenario is that we could actually see price uh, of food fall. And what this could be uh, is the result of a slower population growth and income increases thus dragging down the price of food. All of these factors may play some role in what future food prices could look like. The challenge for us is knowing which one of these scenarios or other scenarios are more likely to be true. If we are better able to predict food prices, we may be better able to help individuals in developing countries meet their food needs into the future. All of these factors play an important role in helping us deal with the issue of hunger. Thank you very much.